The next few poems are about desire. This one has an epigraph from C.D. Wright. Beautiful things fill every vacancy. Dragonflies. Dragonflies swoop and sew whip stitching minutes together. They are the devil's arrows, slim, murderous. Our bed slips away on either side, tips off the addled weight of sorrow. Our breathing slows after the urgency, after the glottal noises. Music stretches and bends, our lips moist. I'm happy beside you in orange light, the sheets wet with sweat. Outside the windows, dragonflies rise, spin, derangement. In half an hour, they eat their weight. Yes, they kill, but they also shine. Stung with their brightness, black, orange, chrome, green, thieves in church. Day stops at its midpoint, sun sucking and feeding. The fitful breeze utters its silent syllables, language letting me go. Hmm. I love weather, and I hope you do too. <laughs> Um, where I live in New Jersey, a lot of people I know figure out the weather when they just go and look out, and that's what it is. They just don't understand <coughs> checking the forecast and um, really being interested in it. Um, so, the name of this poem is Weather. The first snowflakes brush the arm of my coat, and I wipe my face with a mittened hand. When I drive to work, I steer into, or is it away from, dangerous skids, veering away from love. I pump the brakes or don't pump them, slip through dark steam by the turkey plant. My tires splash wings on the gleaming roads. In spring, I drive into light. At the end of the day, workers remove their green plastic headgear and crusted gloves and go home to scrub off the smell of turkey. Mm. Coats fall to floors in the backs of closets. Air sieves through screens. Girls in tight jeans or dresses that look like silk lean on warm brick walls. I lie in bed by a window and hear the talk below, the laughter and curse, and then the murmurs of one couple drawn into shadows. They can't be lovers, since this is a poem about weather. Hot night air from the ocean, an hour away. Violet lightning, hushed sounds like the breath of waves. As you can tell from that poem, I do live closer to the turkey plant than to the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to both of them. <clears throat> Desire. Because your arm smells like rain, like bruised stems of lavender, I open my hand. Hope is a sparrow, common, unbeautiful. I'm proud that my hand isn't shaking. I'm still as the glass woman posed to reveal her inner organs. The new moon stands where clouds make an opening. Above it, a balanced star. Because my heart opens its jaws, because I say your name, joyous, the sound no less for being remembered here, my hand crosses the space to you. Crickets shine in the pale light. Put down your pen. Touch fingers to your lips. Memory lies in the pressure there. Late in darkness, mute night hair and step through reeds to the edge of voluptuous water. Mm. I have three more poems. This one is the title poem from my book, Rose Fever. Spring whispers 
that touches bright lips to her skin. She has a fever. The delirium of roses stirs her. She hears a language anyone can fathom, pitch and rhythm of the body. She's trapped in a clock, tossed by clanging coils and gears. She wants to go out to touch everything, gold of illuminated books, ribbons tied into baby's hair. She wants to kiss the skin between a man's thumb and fingers. Out in the light, turns plunge through blue weather. Sky a balloon of cerulean fluid. The moving tide fills waves until the last one arcs up empty and drapes a rim of foam at her feet. Wetness shines there. She burns in the heat, petals dropping onto sand. This next poem is named for my husband David and is to him, but it also mentions our dear friend Al, who uh, is struggling right now with um, terrible health problems. Um, and he told me the story, which, which was um, one of the times he was in the hospital and he kept hearing this voice calling, and that's, that's how that voice that you'll hear in the poem appeared. David. Sometimes in the car, I say my husband's name. I know where he is, at work or with his friends. Necessity opens a slit in me and speaks through. I hear myself without volition say his name, synchronous with my heartbeat, with a desire not ever to be apart. I hear my hoarse voice again and again, frightened. People in other cars might think I'm singing. That's what they do. Women alone in cars look unguarded as they comb their hair. When I saw my friend Al in the hospital, someone down the hall kept crying, Mary, Mary, oh, Mary. The voice scrabbled and trenched with loss. I thought it must be a man's voice crying. Al said the woman was blind. She called for her sister, long dead. All night, other patients buzzed for medication, trying to step over into sleep, where no one needs so much. Even the primest woman calls out in extremity. People hear her bawl the secrets of her body. I know what I'll be calling, what one name.